So the first person I'd like to introduce uh, is David Bridle. Uh, <laughs> David, as I'm sure most of you will know, he was the founder of Boys Magazine and many other very celebrated gay publications. Um, and, and of course now LGB News, which is our favorite paper. And David has been a staunch supporter of gay rights and HIV health for over 30 years. So he's a true hero of ours. And David's story, he'll come to in a minute, but it just started with a tweet. It was just one tweet. And actually it was drawing attention to LGB Alliance. And David had said, you know, agree or not agree, you might want to listen to what they're saying. And then the world came crashing down and David lost most of his businesses. But anyway, David will tell you this in his own words. So uh, David, over to you. If you don't mind, I've actually written uh, a speech, partly because I'm actually going to quote from a few tweets, because I thought it would just give a, a sort of bit of atmosphere uh, to what happens when you uh, come under attack from the trans rights activists. Um, when the cancel culture Twitter mob is coming for you, uh, it's really hard to see the wood from the trees. And that was me last November. I was in full panic mode. And the reason uh, my business, the gay men's magazine Boys, as Eileen said, uh, published by my partner Kelvin and I since 1991, uh, was being cancelled. In 24 hours, Boys had been boycotted by about two thirds of the London gay scene. And what brought on this onslaught? Again, as Eileen mentioned, a single tweet for an LGB Alliance webinar for gay men. Uh, the tweet said, listen yourself to the founders of the LGB Alliance and then make up your own mind. You don't have to agree, but at least hear them out. I thought our boys readers would be interested in hearing from uh, James Dreyfus, who I think is here today, and uh, Simon Fanshaw. <laughs> who were appearing on the uh, webinar. The irony was, uh, when I actually tweeted that out, I wasn't actually a supporter of the LGB Alliance. And in fact, if I'm really honest with you, I didn't even know what gender critical actually meant. <laughs> a few gay friends had, within the previous months, discussed that the community were, and I quote, throwing the lesbians under the bus. And as a journalist, I sort of wanted to know more. And I thought our boys' readers would want to know more too. But within hours, Owen Jones of The Guardian, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, <laughs> Uh, we're not a fan of Owen, but I'll tell you what he wrote. He wrote, after Boys Magazine defended an anti-trans group, the magazine should be removed from LGBTQ spaces and boycotted by advertisers. Here's another person, Scottish soap actor David Paisley. <laughs> He tweeted, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Why? I shouldn't do that, but I just thought I should. <laughs> Why are you tweeting a hate group, Boys Magazine? Why are you tweeting a hate group, Boys Magazine? And during the course of the day, virtually every single one of the current Boys advertisers were a monthly magazine now. We used to be weekly, but we're a monthly magazine. About, usually we were, 120 pages. Um, every single one of our advertisers was targeted on Twitter by Paisley. The iconic gay pub, the Royal Vauxhall Tavern, who had advertised with us for literally decades, said they would no longer be working with us. Soho distribu distribution points, places where people can go in and pick the magazine up, clone zone, prowler shops, said they would stop stocking boys because we were supporting a hate group. Even Pride in London, who are the organizers of the London Pride March, said, 
We're shocked and disappointed to see Boys Magazine publicizing and defending a transphobic hate group. We will no longer be working with them. And our, our, our friends over at Pink News splashed with the following headline. Uh, Boys Magazine faces blistering backlash after urging readers to listen to anti-trans LGB alliance. And their listen was in uh, quote marks. My business was being destroyed in front of my eyes. And the reason for that is because Boys is a free magazine. We are totally dependent upon advertisers. On the second day of this Twitter onslaught, the chief executive of the Terence Higgins Trust, the long-standing HIV and AIDS charity, asked us to apologize. Ian Green. He wrote, please, Boys Magazine, reconsider your promotion of an organization that is opposed to trans equality. He tweeted it along with a picture, trans rights are human rights, of course. Within an hour of that tweet, I had apologized. I was trying to save my business, and if the CEO of the leading HIV charity, and incidentally a major advertiser in boys, spending up to £20,000 a year, and we're a small business, that's a lot of money, was asking me to apologise, then I would. And of course, as we all know, it was a big mistake. <laughs> A big mistake that I think Mayor Forstater would absolutely, uh, quite rightly, later warn everyone, really, because it is never enough. And let me tell you how it was never enough. Um, although, may I just mention um, that what I was trying to do is save my staff's jobs. Uh, I've got a sales person called Stephen. He's worked for me for 10 years. Um, our designers, our writers, our photographers, but no, it wasn't enough. In January of this year, so this was all happening last November, and then in January of this year, uh, a new Terence Higgins Trust campaign for National HIV Prevention Week was booked into boys. Had been booked for months. Uh, we started talking to them about editorial pages. We used, we've done this campaign with them for 10 years. Uh, a front cover, a photo shoot. But then a few days later, we got an email from our THT contact we won't be running HIV testing week advertising in boys in the issues we discussed. However, we will be in touch in April about running a piece about our new trans sexual health resources. With apologies for the confusion, I had been misadvised. What was the point of the boys' apology if the very organization who had called for it wouldn't accept it and would no longer advertise with us? abdicating its duty to provide HIV prevention information to gay men. What about the gay men in this room who support the LGB Alliance, who maybe read boys? Do they not deserve HIV prevention messages from the THT? I think many of you know, because I'm HIV positive myself and have been for 27 years, this, really, this decision really hurt. Yeah. THT receives £6 million from the public purse, a combination of local and national government. It is effectively an HIV quango, funded by the taxpayer through Public Health England. And now with the Charity Commission demanding charity leaders stop imposing their woke ideas on their organizations, maybe this is one of the uh, questions for the MPs uh, on the panel today. But of course, every cloud has a silver lining. And it was directly out of the THT's decision to boycott boys that I decided to launch Lesbian and Gay News. <laughs> Within six weeks of the THD's decision, LGN was published, uh, was starting publishing, and we published news stories from the great Joe Bartosz, who's here, uh, columns from Julie Bindle, who I think is here, and Gary Powell, uh, legal commentary, as we've heard, from Dennis Kavanagh, and even articles from James Dreyfus, which I thought Yay. made the point. And throughout, young Graham here was writing confidentially and very supportively to me. Here's my advice, he said. Take back your apology. 
They won't accept it anyway. And you will look like a hero in the longer term. Or in the long term. <laughs> Let me just carry on a moment. Gra uh, Graham also said, these people don't forgive, don't forget. I feel like a better option is to plant your flag firmly on the GC, gender critical side. At least then, if you go down, you go down swinging. Yeah. <laughs> and Graham very perceptively added, I do think there's an audience hungry for this stuff. So thank you, Graham. <laughs> they, they try to cancel us, but in fact, they have only made us stronger. It is still a commercial battle with boys. We're still online. But interestingly, we continue to get advertising from theatres, films, and books. Perhaps three places where this debate will increasingly be aired. Most recently, Kubar and its owner, Gary Henshaw, literally one of the oldest boys' magazine advertisers and one of my longest-running friendships on the gay scene, put this out on Twitter. I would like to take this opportunity to apologize unreservedly for showing any support for a publication that has any association in the undermining of the trans community. I will cut all ties with Boys Magazine with immediate effect. He was like the final stalwart from the gay scene that was still supporting us, or had been. But interestingly, I hope for you, Gary at least had the decency to phone me, but only after he had posted that message. He told me, I think I'm making a big mistake, David, but what can I do? Well, he could have stood firm against... He could have, stood, he could have stood firm against the person who targeted Kubar that had just reopened after lockdown, and that person was David Paisley. Our two publications will continue to challenge the gender dialogues who are trying to tear our lesbian and gay community apart. Boys reporting gay men's health and their sexual and emotional attraction to other biological men, and LGN, with your generosity through the crowdfunder, and I thank you very much for that, reporting lesbian and gay news, commentary and culture. Even in the nine months I've been running LGN, I can assure you of this, as we've heard today, change is afoot. And finally, to misquote the American suffragette Elizabeth Cady Stanton, the best protection any woman can have and the best protection any lesbian, gay, or bi bisexual person can have is courage. <laughs>